Bassmaster Elite season of 2013. If you've been along for the ride, you've just about seen it all. Weather, extreme, frightening at times. Changing the game every day. Yeah, baby! Legends, seems they do have something to prove. Showing up big time, battling for trophies, sometimes getting them. Roller coaster rides. We got boat. A huge lead turns into a washout. Got her. And one event later becomes a huge win. Elite Series champion. And a Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year race that goes into the final event with Edwin Evers doing his best to hold off two former champions, trying to run him down. It's been a ride, all right, and plenty of fishing left to go before it's over. At the final stop, Lake St. Clair and the Plano Championship Chase. The world of professional bass fishing, two top prizes, the Bassmaster Classic and Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. The first one is a single tournament against the best in the world. The second one is all about performance over an entire season. Over eight tournaments with the Bassmaster Elite Series. It takes a special angler to win that one. And this season, so far with all the turns, all the changes, all the things that were thrown against these anglers, Edwin Evers has been the man. And Edwin Evers has had a special season. One of those seasons where, where we say, Tommy Sanders, this man cannot be stopped. If you pulled every one of his competitors right now, they'll tell you he is the number one man in the Elite Series that has never won the Angler of the Year title or a Bassmaster Classic Championship. And really, this year, at the Alabama River, we said Edwin Evers cannot be stopped. For that and so many more reasons, everyone was saying Evers is the man of destiny this season in Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Fold in the win on the Alabama River, as you said, and he just seemed absolutely unbeatable. Everyone could scratch their heads. Everyone could figure all their figures as much as they wanted to. They couldn't figure out a way for Evers to be beaten. Hey, welcome to uh -oh. Lake St. Clair, yes. Detroit, Michigan. I'm Tommy Sanders along with Mark Zona. So many great stories and a great tournament coming up on this incredible body of water and beyond. But our number one story, that points race. Exactly right. If you really look at Edwin Evers right now, he has to have just something has to derail to beat him right now. And there's two, there's really two game plans going on here at St. Clair. So far this year, St. Clair is one of the best lakes in the country, but the weights are a little bit down out here. Do you gamble? Do you roll the dice and go as far as you can out into Lake Erie? There's a lot of high risk, high reward going on. Really, whoever takes that title, whoever takes that title will have to roll the dice. All right, that was what was facing Edwin Evers as he came into this tournament. Let's take a look at Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year points coming into this event. And there's Edwin Evers with a 30 point lead, slightly down from his last tournament. He gave up a few points but there. But that's huge. Sure, that is oh. a huge lead. Everyone's saying it's insurmountable. He was the de facto winner coming in here. But of course, it's never done until it's all done. Aaron Martins, Kevin Van Dam giving chase close behind Martins, the rest of them in there. But Edwin Evers, the dominant force, as we take a look at his start here on Lake St. Clair. And he knew he could finish 25th place. It was his, and he'd been doing that well all season long. Well, here's the amazing thing. After day number one, 79th place, Edwin Evers elected, I'm going to stay in St. Clair and play it a little bit safer, play it a little bit safer than the rest of the field. And it did not pay off after day number one. Ah! Felt like I was gonna catch him today. I, you know, yesterday was the day it was really hard for me. You know, I, I had one fish at noon, and you know, I was just fighting all day long trying to catch one. I, I just for the life of me, I didn't know what happened to him. I found the mother load of fish I felt like out on St. Clair, and for the life of me, I don't know where they went. I really expanded on that area a bunch until I spent about three hours out there again this morning. Never found them. I don't know. I don't know where they went. Edwin Evers in shock, all of us in shock. He couldn't fall out down to 54th place, but he did. And look who's ready to step right in there. After the day two weigh-in, Van Dam still finds himself in the mix on his home lake, Lake St. Clair. But 
Aaron Martins with a very high risk game plan. He would jump all the way into the lead. So Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year is a completely different game after day number two of this tournament. Edwin Evers now 22 points behind, not completely eliminated, but something pretty amazing would have to happen to Aaron Martins in order for Edwin Evers to get back in it. Does he think about it? It crosses my mind sometimes, but I just, I don't want to think about it. I just want to catch these fish as best I can, try to win this tournament, so I wanted to do. That was my goal. I told Essie last week, I said, I'm going to try to win here, and I don't ever say that. I just, I figured my only chance to get angry here would be the win, to get first place here. I mean, I, I basically did all I could do. Can't do better than that. But I haven't thought about it too much. And it all unfolds in front of him. The eerie strategy paying off big time on day number three for Aaron Martins. He's fishing at will. Edwin Evers is not a worry. The whole points race is not a worry. He's just staying with what he's doing, trying to win the tournament as he takes him back to the weigh-in. From Leeds, Alabama, Amart, Aaron Martins. Put the fish on the scale. Looking for 22-4 to take the lead and just enough to win it. 20 pounds, 11 ounces. Aaron Martins is third place. He is your 2013 Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. 30 points behind. They said it was insurmountable. Amart said no way. Only 10 anglers in Bassmaster history have won multiple Anglers of the Year. And dude, you are one of them. Tell me what's going through your mind right now. Man, I can't believe my family is here. I was like, I was like, this is one of the best days, best days of my whole entire career, and I've been fishing a long time. And I was like, the only way it'd be better if these. <laughs> What a great champion for the second time. Aaron Martin's collecting that very, very valuable prize. And you said, hey, if there's anyone we need to look out for, you said this two weeks ago, it's that guy Aaron Martin's proves you right. I'm Absolutely. afraid. Well, you know, well, I appreciate <laughs> that. But number one, uh, you cannot slip up with these guys. And Edwin Evers slipped up on the worst tournament of the season. What a great, great story to start this event. And we will have the conclusion of this event. Championship day, 12 anglers, including Aaron Martin's trying to win the $100,000 and the last championship opportunity of the regular season when we come back. The Bass Master Elite Series Plano Championship Chase is brought to you by Triton Boats. Bass Pro Shops. Mercury. And by Skeeter Boats. From Leeds, Alabama, Amart, Aaron Martin. 20 pounds, 11 ounces, Aaron Martins in third place. He is your 2013 Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Welcome back to Plano Championship Chase, the final event of the season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. A big week, such an important week. Of course, yesterday you saw we crowned our champion of the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, that year-long competition, and congratulations to Aaron Martins, his second such, such trophy in his career. Very, very prestigious. That was yesterday. This is the fourth and final day championship day of this event, and it's a big one, too. We're down to 12 anglers, as you see on this final day. Aaron Martins, part of the equation. He sits in third place. Second place, Chris Lane, our classic champ from two years ago, and they're all chasing, well, one of two men to hold the points title and the classic title in the same year, the great Mark Davis. So that's the story, the big dogs of the sport shooting it out on this final day on this incredible fishery. Mark Zona, you are intimately familiar with this place. You've been here hundreds of times. Some important things to know about our playing field today, right? Thanks, Tommy, and our Yamaha Lay of the Lake this week. Well, it is a monster. Lake St. Clair, Detroit, Michigan. As you see these anglers in the background, here's the amazing dynamic this week. They are all leaving here. Some of our anglers heading all the way up to Lake Huron, almost 70 miles away. But a big number, a big number of those anglers behind me 
heading out to Lake Erie. And the thing is, when those guys get there, they are knocking their lights out. But the number one factor, you have to make it back. Lots of miles traversing them successfully. A big part of our story here from Lake St. Clair between Huron and Giant Lake Erie. A trip down the Detroit River takes us into Erie and near a place called the Sister Islands. Exactly right. If you look at that big island to the left, you see Peely Island right there. Mark Davis said he didn't want any part of traveling that far. Stopped on East Sister Island. Really, Tommy Sanders, he has lived there all week long. And he said every morning, every morning when he got there, there was a small flurry. Honestly, I came here playing the fish St. Clair, and after a, you know catching a lot of fish on St. Clair, they were all thin, and they didn't weigh much. So I thought I'm gonna go to Erie. One, one practice day, I found like seven schools of fish. And I thought well, that's got to be enough, you know. Of course, you never know with smallmouth; they they move around on you a lot. That's just, that's the Strike King Dream Shot. Green pumpkin, putting a little chartreuse on it. Been having to change up, you know, throw different stuff. They eh? different little worms, different colors. He's a little guy. I don't even know if he'll keep. Maybe he'll keep. I don't know. Well, that's Mark bad. Davis with one in the live well right there early. It's the final day of competition. From Lake Erie, we're going to take us a long run up north. Going to leave Lake Erie, go through the Detroit River, Lake St. Clair. We're going to get with Chris Lane going all the way up through the St. Clair River, finding himself at the mouth of Lake Huron. And really coming into this event, Chris Lane knows he has to catch him. has to catch him in a big way. You know, really with, with all the pressures set aside, I knew coming into this event that I had to do the best that I could, and I knew that I needed a top five. So to try to catch, you know, 15 pounds of largemouth wasn't gonna do me any good. So I stayed out deep, stayed out deep, and you know, just finally got on a school, a big small mouth like I've never seen before. There's a good one. There you go, girl. I'll play with this drag the entire time. Feisty little guys this morning. Number one. Here he comes. He's letting you know. Get the get the <laughs> out of the way. Okay, got the point. We're like a little ant out here amongst all these giant boats you'll see this afternoon. Get out of his way. Second place to start the day, Chris Lane. He takes a trip to Huron, finds his fish, catches enough to at least for now take over the lead unofficially and now has to move. The boat traffic will be insistent all day long, something he's learned to deal with. When we come back, Recently crowned Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Aaron Martins, Derek Rimmitz, and others are going to take their shot at the leader, Mark Davis. Can Chris Lane get it done all day on Huron? We'll be back. The Plano Championship Chase, also known as the last day of school for the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is our last regular season event. 
to take a look at our Skeeter Boats rules of the game. We fished for four days. We had the full field the first couple of days. We cut down to 12. After the third day of fishing, that's what we've got out there for eight hours of fishing with a five fish limit today and a hundred grand to the winner. Here's a guy who's already had a great week. Now he's crowned the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Aaron Martins. Great week, but he is going to pay for it in a big way early this final morning. Aaron Martins running. He's running about 25 miles out into the middle of Lake Erie into, well, a very old school area. He follows track out of St. Clair right there in the Erie, fishing an area just north of North Bass Island. The one thing you could say, looking at all this footage, Aaron Martin's getting the fire kicked out of him. Come on, gosh dang it. There's ways to shove, it's like somebody just pushing your boat as hard as you can. So pain in the butt. Gosh dang, man. Can't even see my graph half the time. A lot of times the waves are so trollmers out of the water. Trying to find that stretch that I came down and saw like three arches. Yep, nice one. He was in the boat. He was in the boat. He jumped on the top of the gun and went back in the water. Four pounder. How do you know to do what to do? You know, it's a frantic fish. He's a fighter. It's definitely a big one. Ah! Dude, son of a. I had my hand on him. He came off as I grabbed him. Had my hand under, he came off as I grabbed him, which that, you know doesn't happen very often. Freaking skin hood, like this barely had skin. Oh my luck! What happened? I haven't lost one yet like that. At least it didn't happen yesterday. Got that right. Big loss for Aaron Martins. These guys catching quality in Erie, Tommy Sanders, but not big numbers. It's been a tough season for Chris Lane so far, but he comes here and he starts to light it up. How about the Berkeley Heavyweight Bag of the Week? 22-15 on day number three. Gets things going in the top 12. In fact, second place to start this fourth and final day, and so far it's been positive. Here he comes. Think we could take him? No, don't you do it. <laughs> Come here. Rah! <laughs> then, uh, woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Ow, ow. Man, they have flat beat up my hand. Ow. But. I'll let him beat him up one more day. Chris Lane has already accomplished job one coming into this tournament. He was not qualified for the Bassmaster Classic, but now, having made it to this day into the top 12, he is in the Classic. Is that our Diet Mountain Dew breakthrough move? No, this this one's more about actually moving through some pretty difficult water. Well, here, here's the deal. When you come to this area of the country and you want to catch big smallmouth bass, you're going to pay the price sometimes and on this final day guys definitely pay the price whether it's the angler the cameraman the camera boat driver the marshals in this event the one thing you need to know you better have your sea legs our camera guys who have been doing this very demanding job some of them for 15 years and more have said to a man this is the roughest most demanding tournament they have ever been through a wave is not a wave is not a wave oh no yeah, i hate that picture oh no that's bad that's when you feel terrible these waves are very very hard to run for the anglers and of course the camera guys everyone else the marshals pay the price as we get out to derek rimmett's one win in his Bassmaster elite series career 
Hey, there we go. Yeah. That's why you wear sandals. <laughs> there's just, there's nothing easy about this place, you know? For me personally, it's, I, I enjoy the challenge. Um, it's like the fact that you have to make it out there to them. And you've got, you know, this my, this island is 11 miles long and it's got fish all around it, but then you have to find where they live. And then in the tournament, you have to make it there. Then you have to catch them in half a day. And then you got to make it back in. And it's uh, part of that challenge. I don't know. I kind of, I'm crazy or what, but I enjoy it. So, and it's just, there's just nothing comes easy. You know, a good day on Erie, you know, eight bites a day is a pretty good day. If you get eight bites, you're gonna at least scare having 20 pounds anyway. So, uh, you know, every minute is crucial out here right now. Fitting like a bass, fighting like a drone. Derek Grimmett had himself a big day three, 22 and a half pounds to gain the top six as we start this fourth and final day. He's doing his best out here to hang with the top three, of which Chris Lane has taken that one over, but we got plenty more fishing left at the Plano Championship Chase when we come back. The Bassmaster Elite Series Plano Championship Chase is brought to you by Nitro. Evan Williams Bourbon. And by Minn Kota. Eight tournaments during the regular season of the Bassmaster Elite Series and we have reached the end, the last one Plano Championship Chase. Alton Jones, one of the anglers that started this season with a good effort, and he's maintained his pace all the way through. As a matter of fact, Alton, by making it into the top 12 today, has qualified for Toyota All-Star Week coming up later in the state of Michigan. And now here's Alton Jones, also not too far from Chris Lane today. No, Alton Jones also fishing in the mouth of Huron. Been there all week long and catching a lot of bass. A lot of our competitors catching quality, but not numbers. Alton Jones catching some big numbers throughout this event and solid fish like that. Now, going to head back down south, going to get out on Lake Erie with Keith Combs. Combs said before this event, I want no part of Lake Erie. Let me stay on St. Clair, but after one day of practice, Combs really felt he was on the winning fish. Of course, Keith Combs made his bones early in the season, our second event at Falcon Lake. Taking a victory over the veteran Rick Clun on a delayed final day. It was a huge win for the Texas angler. There's a lot of similarities, you know, Falcon, for example, you know, the big ones there, they relate to rock, especially isolated rock and or rock that has uh, unique features, you know, not not like the rest of the rock around it. it has a better drop or something like that. And it's kind of the same thing here this week. Everywhere that I'm catching my good fish, the area has, you know, a key characteristic. When you see one of those good three or four foot edges, you know, even if the fish are not there, you might want to drop a waypoint on that just because they're going to get there. So, you know, if I would say there's anything to, to locate in the fish out here in this big mass of water is uh, get out here on a calm day, cruise around, turn your hummingbirds on, and just watch for that something, something unique, something unique to that area that you're in, and you'll find some smallmouth. Get in here. Still not the right size, but man, it's just good to get bit in this area. This is where I caught all the big ones the first day of practice. You know, as long as they're biting out here, I'm confident that some of them are gonna be the big ones. Yesterday, I Keith Combs not catching those big ones yet, but he's one of the few anglers on Erie getting big numbers. Now back to Mark Davis and Typical Lake Erie here today and gone tomorrow. Going to get on the water right now with Davis. Mark Davis, 
Give us a give us the lowdown on what's going on today and how it's different from the first three days of this tournament. I'm assuming you're fishing in generally the same area. Fishing the same area, Tommy. It's just uh, yeah, I'm not getting any bites. I've uh, I just don't. This hump I'm on, I've caught some here in practice, but I'm struggling. That's the word for me, struggling. All right. Mark, if you can, do, do you have any, do you have a plan B, or is it all in till the last second you can stay on Erie? No, there's no plan B. There was, there was never a plan B. You know, I was, I was going to fish for these big fish out here in the middle of the lake. Mark, what do you think has changed out there? Hard to say. You know, these smallmouth move around. Uh, winds. 180 degrees different today than it, it was yesterday. Uh, repositions them. They move around. I don't. I really don't know. <laughs> this is about my ninth day of my of my life to ever fish Lake Erie. So you know, I know I'm around good fish, and all I can do is fish for them and hope for the best. Okay. Well, uh, we hope they show up for you and they cooperate with you, and then we will see you at weigh-in time. Thanks for spending a little time with us, Mark Davis. Glad to do it, guys. Thank you. He's not a giant, but he's decent. What do you say? Oh boy. Well again, these guys, especially the ones on Erie, not getting that many opportunities during the course of a day. That one will be big for Mark Davis in a bad way. Big fish loss for Davis right there. We're gonna head back up north right now with Chris Lane. Take a look at this marker can right now. We're gonna really dial in what Chris Lane's been doing. Well, this entire event, a lot of the locals are gonna know this one with our Humminbird Advanced View. If we go under the water right here, this technique is known as slipping the current. Chris Lane would get really up current on the north side of this buoy and let the current flush his boat. You look under, see that cable going down. All of those buoys have a big cement embutment and those small mouth would reload there every day. He pitches drop shot up current and just flow with the current till he would pass that buoy and that's when those big smallmouth would hit his drop shot. And the great thing is, you don't have to work your bait. You let the current do the work for you. And the real work is, when that wind gets kicking in that current, well, you have to constantly reposition. Right about now, about now. Uh-oh, I think we might have one here. I saw it way down there and I can't really tell. It doesn't have that little prrr. It's got that foomp, foomp. There he is. Yes, bam! Oh, slabby. They're so fat, you can't even get your hand around their back. Yeah, I think we've got something here. Well, Chris Lane, despite the very strenuous nature of this type of fishing, obviously enjoying himself very, very much today. Fishing hard and getting great results. Chris Lane started a pound behind our leader, Mark Davis, and now Chris Lane is firmly in the lead right now, but yep. still time for things we to do. change. You never know what's gonna happen in a oh, fishery like this one. We're gonna take you now from our 2012 Bassmaster Classic champion, Chris Lane, over to the man who just locked up Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Aaron Martins. Aaron Martins started this day in third place. Again, he's knocked down one of the biggest awards you can get in the sport of bass fishing, but he's been all the time thinking about winning this tournament. Come in this tournament, I really, I, I told Les I'm really going to try to win this one. So this is one I'm going, I'm going to really try. That was before practice started. I, I told her I really wanted to 
that was my goal was to win this tournament. And I don't ever say that. It's, I, mean, I, I, I do try to win them all, but you don't ever say that you're going to really try to win this one. I mean, you know what I mean? You, you always try to win them, but I really came into this one wanting to win it. I think there's more there, guys. Ricky, I think there might be more there. So this is I, I caught I caught some here the first day. I mean it could be stacked here. I mean I haven't got to my waypoint yet. I'm like 100 feet from where I caught that one. I mean I have it. I have the rock pile marked and there's rocks all over. There's a lot of bait here. I'm seeing lots of bait. The last fish I caught, I dropped on some bait. Small mouth. Big. Oh, it's a big one. It's not even fighting. Oh my gosh, it's the biggest one I've caught. Oh, it's a big one, dude. Oh my gosh, please stay hooked. Oh my gosh, it's a big one. Oh, this is really one we need right here. Oh. <laughs> Aaron Martins, his focus, his execution has been absolutely flawless throughout this tournament. Can he carry it off to the very end of this thing and hold off Chris Lane and the rest of his pursuers? We'll find out. Incredible images from Bassmaster.com of this brutal day on the water. And it is time, my friend, the Evan Williams shot of the day. Oh, no, we can't. Tommy Sanders, yeah. only one thing to be said. Lake Erie, welcome to the pain cave. How about Mark Davis in that photo? A low point in his day, to be sure, as we head out to Kataro Kiriyama. He's got one Bassmaster Elite Series win. That was right here on Lake Erie, averaging an incredible 23 pounds a day back in 2008, trying to reignite that magic today. Yep, this one I got it. Sit down, going good. All right, here's another one. My crust is shit. Kota Kiriyama with a good one right there. Has been living off the northeast tip of Pili the whole tournament. He's a nice bag already on day number four. Back to Chris Lane. Dealing with something more than wind now, dealing with all the pleasure boaters up in Lake Huron. Okay. There you go. You're tired, you've been doing this for four days, and a week really, with three days of practice. You get out here with these giant boats, the last day you're trying to win a tournament. I got a feeling if it's gonna come down to it, the wire, I need to, you know, stay focused on what I'm doing. Not let any of that stuff either get in your head. Sure. There's a good one. <laughs> Big one, I think. Feels good, feels good. Feels like one of them fives, maybe. Come on, baby. I don't know, I don't know. Look at the cow, here comes these waves. Watch out. Oh, yes, yes. Don't you do it. <clears throat> oh, no. Yep, perfect. Nice. 
great. Just give me your mouth. Oh, jeez. you that's a call baby that's what we're after right there man I didn't think I was ever gonna get him them waves see what I mean about them exciting. waves yep perfect nice great now that my friend is a good call put him on the big side Got an angler originally from Florida, now lives in Alabama, and learned how to drop shot from none other than Aaron Martins. And I'm sorry, Tommy Sanders, that was one of the best fish catches of the year. There's more entertainment than you could reasonably expect on a day like today. Chris Lane really, really doing great. But Mark Davis, who started this day with the lead, dropped down to fourth, and well, it's here today, gone tomorrow for this former angler of the year. Well, you know, the, the first time I won it, I've won three of them. The first time I won it, uh, I'd won the Classic. So the Classic kind of overshadowed, or it at least threw a blanket over Angler of the Year. But now, later in my career, winning those Angler of the Year titles, they are huge. They are huge. That is the one thing that you know goes on your resume as an angler. And now, the, you know, like Garen joins a very elite group in winning two. Because there's just a handful of guys that's won more than one. Bunch of them right there. Today, I mean, I just hadn't got the bites. Now, I lost that one, but I just hadn't got the bites today to do any good. But, you know, I ain't gonna be upset. I knew this whole deal was a gamble, and I've done my best. That's all you can do. Barring a miracle right here at the end. Mark Davis needs that one and frankly several more like it if he wants to change his fortunes on this final day, which for him has been very tough. Yeah, tough day for Davis, no doubt about that. Aaron Martin's fishing just down from Davis. You take a look at this playing field, these guys in the middle of Lake Erie, you give them a lot of credit finding those big schools of smallmouth bass, but they have a massive run back to St. Clair, really about a 60 mile run. One thing about Aaron Martins, though, he is still catching them and working on a great bag of smallmouth. Oh, he's big. This is giving me almost 20 pounds. Oh, that's a big one, dude. Oh, yes. That's, that's just finishing the limit. That makes me feel like he ate it good, too. Oh, relief. We got time. I only have like 20 minutes. <laughs> His work is done on this final day for Aaron Martins unofficially tied up with Chris Lane, but what a season. A dismal start and a build ever since then, and this could be the climax of the year for him. And I'll say it, Aaron Martins, one of the best we have ever covered, especially, especially at finding schools of bass, and schools of bass that a lot of other anglers constantly ignore. The one thing about his game plan throughout this week, high risk, high reward. You go there, you get there, you beat the fire out of yourself. Main thing, you have to get back. Time to batten down the hatches and head through Lake Erie all the way up the Detroit River to our headquarters at St. Clair. Aaron Martin's now beginning this arduous run. He's gotta get off Lake Erie, get up the Detroit River to our headquarters in St. Clair, and it's a tough one. We took a good beating. Um, 
we pushed it a little bit. I caught three in the last like half hour. It got really good. And it was calm where we were at. It was really nice. Um, you hear, it's showing the big boats. Look, look behind you, Ricky. You got like three and four or five of those in a row sometimes. And then they crisscross. They come in towards each other and they make these gigantic waves. And uh, we hit a real bad one. And we're OK. And that's what happened. We hit some of those big holes and uh, twisted real hard. It's a pretty sick feeling, you know, coming in like that, and you feel you feel like a wobble in your boat. And I kind of knew immediately. Um, I probably sheared the bolts off because I'd done it once before. And but this is what the sport's all about. This is what this is what yesterday I, I made that chance, but I would gave myself more time yesterday because I was, you know, there was more at stake. Today we pushed it like we normally do, but it's just way more fierce. And uh, and this happens constantly at these tournaments all the time. The failure of a couple of bolts, and that's all it took. Aaron Martins, his incredible effort throughout this week. Well, it's done. It's all for naught. His fish will not be going to the weigh-in, but we'll be going there to find our winner when we come back. The Bass Master League Series Plano Championship Chase is brought to you by Berkeley. Humminbird. Toyota. And by Skeeter Boats. The final day, the final weigh-in of the Bassmaster Elite Series 2013. This is the Plano Championship Chase. Big crowd here at Metro Park in Detroit. Here to see their heroes. We are ready to bring the fish to the stage. Our first angler, a former Bassmaster Classic Champion, an Elite Series Champion, all the way from Waco, Texas, Elton Jones. Looking for 9'8", 22 pounds, three ounces. Alton Jones, all the way from 12th place, is now leading the Plano Championship Chase with 76 pounds, six ounces. A stunning day from Alton Jones coming all the way from 12th place. A big, big limit of fish. He's going to be hard to catch for a while. He's on the hot seat, and Jeremy Starks cannot get it done. Ditto for Randy Howell. A great week for him. Former Bassmaster Classic champ Takahiro Amori cannot knock off Alton Jones. And the only Michigander in this field, Nate Wellman. Again, unable to unseat Jones. One of three Japanese anglers in this top 12. Morizo Shimizu, a great week for him. Keith Combs, he's won already this season, trying to bookend it. Couldn't get it done on this final day. And Kataro Kiriyama, who has won on Lake Erie, will fall short of Alton Jones. Ditto for Derek Rimmitz, who's had his best tournament of the year. And now we come to Chris Lane. He is the 2012 Bassmaster Classic Champion. Let me hear it for Chris Lane. Chris Lane's wife, Holly, drove in here through the night and surprised him here. The surprise worked out for Aaron. Yeah, oh my word. 62 pounds, nine ounces coming in today. He's got five fish all alive, looking for 13, 14. 19 pounds, 11 ounces. Chris Lane crushes him at the Plano Championship Chase. Moves into the lead with 82 pounds, four ounces. One more angler left to go. He has led this deal for the last two days. From Mount Ida, Arkansas, Mark Davis. <laughs> 63 pounds, 10 ounces. Chris, come on over here. One of these guys is gonna be our champion. Get right in the middle. 63 pounds, 10 ounces, looking for 18, 11. 18, 11 is what he needs. 13 pounds, three ounces. Chris Lane has done it. The 2012 Bassmaster Classic Champion, the Plano Championship Chase, belongs to the champ, Chris Lane. The champ is here. 
Give it up, Detroit, for the champion of the Plano Championship. Chase, wow, first ever champion. What's the word for today? Pow! Pow is the word for yeah, today. That's the one we like. So good. Chris Lane, how does it feel? Not even out of your 30s yet, you have five wins with the Bassmasters, including a classic championship. You know, it's just a truly, it's an honor, you know, to, to take, that, take this title home and, uh, you know, to actually be an Elite Series champion. Man, it just really feels good, you know. But I got to say, congratulations to Aaron Martin. This is the last event of the year. What a phenomenal angler of the year he has been or will be. And what a great job he did this Absolutely. entire year. And I said, Mark Davis, I know he set out for the same goal I did, and that was to make the Bassmaster Classic, and he did it, and I did it. And just what a what a great, great turn of events here in Michigan. Got something you're going to show us in about one minute here. Yeah. I want to set it up with the fact that you came here knowing that you had to do exceptionally well. In fact, as late as yesterday, you thought you had to be top five to make it to the Classic. That was the whole point of coming in here. And I asked you, I said, if you don't make it to the Classic, I mean, you've been to the Classic. You never want to fail at that again. And you said, you know what, the Classic, Classic ain't everything, you know? There's more to the, to the world than that. There is, you know, the Classic is the biggest thing in bass fishing, hands down. And it's the most amazing tournament that an angler will ever fish in his entire life. So I knew that I'm very blessed and I don't want to take that for granted. And, you know, I went in with that attitude. So, you know, all my kids send me, whether it's pictures, they send me some crazy stuff and they draw stuff. But this one actually stuck right in my mind and it stuck in my head because I knew that it wasn't in my hands. You know, just, uh, just, you know, without my family, without the support that they give me, it, you know, it wouldn't be done because, you know, I'm getting to the age where I got four kids and football and cheerleading and gymnastics and a two-year-old that just, I feel for my wife because he's a terror. <laughs> Well, you're the terror of the bass fishing world today and have been for a long time. One more hand for our champion, the Plano Championship, Jason. Thank you. Chris Lane. Thank you. Thank you.